Tonight, in the path of totality. Woo! Yes! The rare collective moment across the country, looking eyes up at the rare total eclipse, the moments of unity coast to coast as the nation set its gaze to the sky for this once in a lifetime moment. We'll have all the details as we chase the eclipse from Texas all the way to Maine. Plus, all day I tell them I have nothing for them. You tell them I have nothing. She's no employment. There's nothing here. Shaken and unsure if they'll ever be able to return to work. In tonight's Prime Focus, we're in Baltimore for a look at the catastrophic collapse of the Key Bridge and how its fall has decimated a community in more ways than one. And what questions would you ask? I want to ask them how to make it feel like home again. Learning from those who have lived through similar tragedies, we follow Lahaina students on a grand adventure to Japan for a lesson on rebuilding and resilience. everyone, I'm Lindsay Davis coming to you live from Burlington, Vermont for special coverage of today's historic eclipse. Thank you so much for streaming with us. We have that plus a lot more to get to tonight, including the big policy announcement from Donald Trump that his members of his own party crying out against him, plus the major student loan announcement from the White House impacting millions of borrowers, and the Southwest Airlines mid-flight emergency that's now making headlines, the plane's engine cover coming off, blowing in the wind. We have those details, but we do begin with the scene that played out across much of the country today as millions of Americans sought out the once-in-a-lifetime chance to witness the moon pass between the Earth and the sun. From emotional tears to all-out applause, time seemed to stand still for millions of Americans from Texas all the way to Maine. 99% of us were able to see at least some part of the rare total solar eclipse at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thousands looked to the sky from the bleachers, while clouds over Niagara Falls parted just in time for the crowds to take total darkness in there. And here in Burlington, Vermont, also along the path of totality, I had the chance to witness the historic moment alongside my colleague David Muir, just one of the many cities across the U.S. that experienced a rare collective moment much larger than ourselves. And there we go. There we have it. Across North America, a fleeting phenomenon. Woo, look at that. A celestial spectacle when for a brief moment, time seemed to stand still. Starting off in Mexico. I've never seen anything like this before. This is my first total eclipse. Millions flock to the path of totality of a solar eclipse moving more than 3,000 miles per hour, stretching across 15 states. All eyes, young and old, bearing witness to a celestial event visible with the naked eye, with hopes they wouldn't be cheated out of this rare event by cloud cover. We'll see what happens. It's up to the weather gods now. Look at that. Millions united by an act of the heavens, two celestial bodies aligned. All of us able to play astronomer for the day as the sun's corona encircled the moon. I got tingles from my fingertips right down my elbows into my knees. Ooh, my heart is beating so fast, Ginger. Many experiencing a 10 degree dip. I can tell you the biggest feeling that I have right now is just that temperature drop and the energy that is coming from the community here. Um, I always, I almost want to be a little bit quiet, David and Lindsay, as this moment, oh my gosh. Wow. That is, um. And it wasn't just the temperatures that dropped, some tears did as well. Many emotional and in awe. You sound tears, emotional. Tears in my eyes. A universal moment of unity. And here in Russellville, Arkansas, a moment of celebration for star-crossed lovers. You may now seal the sacred union with a kiss. As the sun and moon appeared to become one, so too did more than 300 couples choosing this special day to get married. This couple's first date was during the partial eclipse in 2017. The sun and the moon and the earth have become one, and so have we. <laughs> the moon passes in front of the sun about every 18 months, but for so many of us, it's out of view. A sight like this in the lower 48 states won't come again for two more decades. 
an unusual moment experienced by animals of all kinds, some with confusion. Birds, flocks of birds flying by. We see a lot of insects around us. It got cold and it is dark here in Dallas, you guys. 35,000 feet up, flight radar revealed the large number of planes right in the path of totality. From space, astronauts at the International Space Station got their own unique view, experiencing the blanket of darkness from on high. Those outside the path of totality from New York City to our nation's capital not left out of the experience entirely. And just as quickly as this ethereal beauty arrived, it departed, but its impact not soon forgotten. For many, it's a gateway experience, prompting new curiosities about space and beyond, along with an eagerness to chase the next eclipse. It's just incredible, no? I will go see every single one I can. <laughs> it's contagious there, and joining us now is my colleague and anchor of World News Tonight, Mr. David Muir. And David, uh, we were on the air together for hours, of course, weeks of planning went to this, but there are always surprises. Was there anything that surprised you about today? Oh, gosh, so much. Uh, and I think that we were both surprised in, in some of the same moments. When we were standing right here in Burlington, obviously, beautiful Lake Champlain behind yes, us. I mean, how beautiful gorgeous. is this tonight? Like ice, the water. But under a perfectly clear blue sky, mm. the temperature shifted first, and we knew that was coming, but it, then it came. And it's still cold tonight as we stand here. But then when the skies darkened and that final moment, that final sort of beam of light coming from the sun that they call the diamond ring, we had seen it play out in some of the other locations, but when it played out here right behind us, when we were looking with our glasses, it seemed enormous, didn't uh, it? I mean, that was a nice rock. It really, yes, exactly. <laughs> Whoever got that diamond ring. But I just was, it, it was so breathtaking. I couldn't, you know, come up with the words for it. And we, we played back the video just because I wanted to see what it was that you and I were looking at. And it was almost like this pink, purplish yes. glow. And I thought that was one of the most um, defining moments. And, and you actually called it because in some of the places, uh, you know, I know at Niagara Falls, Rob Marciano had said, oh, it's kind of cloudy, we're bummed. And you were like, there's a chance that the skies will clear up. And they did. And for some people, it was an emotional emotional experience. You've been through this before, not your first rodeo. Yeah. What is it about this moment that you feel it brings some people to tears? Well, I think one of the things is we cover this every night on the news. Uh, it's a divided country. There, there's so much polarization and, and a lot of it probably is unnecessary. There's a lot of competing voices at the each end of the spectrum. And I think this is one of those moments where we're reminded of that, how unnecessary some of that noise is because it's a shared moment. And look at the millions of Americans and, you know, not just the path of totality, which was wider than the last time, but the far reaches, you know, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, they all saw it. Central Park, the top yes. of the Empire State Building. And even when we were standing here, it just goes quiet. Yes. The birds are flying sideways. Yeah, you right, pointed that right. out. You were like, what's going on here? But just to see, uh, speaking right of on cue. You know, <laughs> team coverage, the bird just flew over us. But I just think the silence also spoke volumes. People were definitely in it together. And you you and I were talking off air about the people of Burlington. When, when we arrived and we arrived separately, we both were received in sort of the same way. People were telling us we're here for the eclipse. This is a rare once in a lifetime moment. It's going to be 20 years before we experience this again. And I think when we have a shared moment like that, it really does remind us that uh, how much uh, hunger there is for these shared moments out there. It puts things really in perspective. David, just a pleasure and privilege uh, oh, to be alongside with so you today witnessing this. We're joking Thank tomorrow. You. Let's do it again. Yeah, right. Exactly. I think exactly. 20 years. 20 years. 2044. Do the math. Yeah, do the we'll math. See you I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be around, but I'm not sure we'll be around. You know what I mean? <laughs> We'll be, we'll be doing okay. it. We'll be okay. doing it. David, thank you, you so bet. much. And also joining us now is ABC News contributor Professor Hakeem Olushe, visiting professor of physics at Princeton and George Mason Universities. Seeing the sun's corona during the eclipse was certainly awe-inspiring, as David and I were just discussing. But, but tell us exactly what we were seeing, the scientific for, you know, maybe the third grade mind. <laughs> Yeah, what you saw is a big scientific paradox, and that is, is that the sun's atmosphere is a million degrees Kelvin, while the surface is only 5,800 degrees Kelvin. And we were able to see that because the moon blocked the disk of the sun. That coronal light is typically a billion times more dim than the surface of the sun. So except for a total solar eclipse, you can't see it. It's always there, but you just can't see it. Now the moon helped us out. We're able to see it, and scientists were able to study it. 
And, and the path of totality this time was much wider than America's last solar eclipse back in yeah. 2017. 122 miles at its widest versus 71. Why is that? Yeah. Well, it's the same reason we had an annular eclipse in America in 2023 and fulls in 2017 and 2024. All the conditions for a total solar eclipse are there, but the moon can move a little bit away from the Earth and a little bit toward the Earth. So at its farthest distance, you get an annular eclipse like in 2017. If it's closer, excuse me, like in 2023, if it's closer, you get that small shadow as in 2017, a two-minute eclipse. But if it's closer to the Earth, the moon is closer to the Earth, you get a nice fat shadow, and that means you have a much longer eclipse. And the 2024 eclipse was about twice as long as the 2017 eclipse. And this eclipse occurred during a period of maximum solar activity. How did that make it more special? Yeah. And what causes these different periods of activity? Yeah, so the activity on the surface of the sun is due to the magnetic fields on the surface of the sun. And those magnetic fields are dynamic and they're mobile. So every 11 years, the sun is just like a bar magnet. North at, the, at one end, south at the other pole, but then they mix up and they flip. Right? You have north at the bottom, south at the top, and then 11 years later, it does the same thing again. So at solar maximum, that's when the fields are as mixed up as they ever are. That's maximum mix. And that means that more interactions, which means more energy gets put into the plasmas. And so you see structures all around the edges of the sun instead of just at the equator and above and below the equator. So this was an incredibly active corona. There were streamers flying out all over the place. And it was gorgeous here in Dallas. And Professor Olushe, we thank you so much for your time and, and breaking it down for us in layman terms for, for those of us who are just uh, newly dabbling in this science. We really appreciate it. It's cool stuff. Thank you. <laughs> It really is cool stuff and really special to witness. And while millions gathered across the country to watch this rare eclipse, millions, potentially billions of dollars were raked in. We'll have more coverage of the unique moment and the money it brought in later on in the show when we take a look by the numbers. To other news now, former President Trump has taken a stand on abortion, saying he believes the issue should be left to the states. That position angered his anti-abortion supporters who looked to him to endorse a nationwide ban, but it shows how pivotal the issue could be to his re-election bid. Here's ABC senior congressional correspondent Rachel Scott. Tonight, after months of hinting he would support a national abortion ban, now Donald Trump declaring the matter should be left up to individual states. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Just last month, Trump said he was leaning towards supporting a national ban at around 15 weeks. The number of weeks now, people are, are agreeing on 15, and I'm thinking in terms of that. But now a reversal. Today, Trump made it clear politics was at the heart of his decision. Keenly aware abortion rights has won in all six states where it has appeared on the ballot, including in conservative states like Kansas, Kentucky, and Ohio. You must follow your heart of this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country. Tonight, President Biden pointing out 21 states have banned or severely limited access to abortion since Roe was overturned. Donald Trump just endorsed every single state ban on reproductive care nationwide. Biden's campaign seizing on Trump's false new claim that both sides of the abortion debate were happy when the Supreme Court overturned Roe. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and in fact demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. Today, Vice President Harris firing back. He's proudly responsible that one in three women of reproductive age now live in a state with an abortion ban. If he were to be put back in a position where he could sign off on a law, he would sign off on a national abortion ban. Let's be very clear about that. The Biden campaign reminding Americans Trump often boasted of appointing the justices who overturned Roe, taking away a woman's right to choose. Tonight, warning voters not to be fooled. Trump says he supports exceptions for rape, incest, and to save the life of the mother. He won't say if he also supports exceptions to protect the mother's health. Lindsay.
Rachel, thank you. One week before he's scheduled to stand trial in his hush money case, former President Trump today launched a last-minute attempt to delay, arguing the publicity around his trial makes it impossible to find a fair and impartial jury. But an appeals court in New York rejected that request. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to hide payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Daniels was allegedly paid $130,000 to keep quiet about an extramarital affair they had years earlier. The trial is set to begin next week and will be the first ever criminal trial of a former president. A scare on board a Southwest flight from Denver to Houston shortly after takeoff. Passengers looking out of the window saw that part of the engine cover was ripping away. ABC's Mola Lange reports in from Denver. Tonight, frightening video showing part of the engine cover on a Southwest jet tearing off as the plane makes an immediate emergency landing. Southwest Flight 3695 had departed from Denver just before 8 a.m. on Sunday, bound for Houston, when passenger Lisa Catterall says she felt a jolt outside her window. Several of us called the flight attendant, and she was like, oh, my God, and went and got the pilots. The pilots declaring an emergency and requesting an immediate return. We got a piece of the engine cowling hanging off, apparently. Our engines seem to be fine, but uh, we are structurally damaged. The Boeing 737, with 143 passengers and crew on board, forced to return to Denver just minutes later, crews towing it back to the gate. These kinds of incidents are fairly rare, but anytime they do happen, it's usually because somebody failed to close those outer panels on the engine. In a statement, Southwest saying, in part, the plane landed safely after experiencing a mechanical issue, adding, our maintenance teams are reviewing the aircraft. Well, Lindsay, passengers arrived in Houston later on Sunday after being put on another plane. And tonight, the FAA says it's investigating. Lindsay? Mola, thank you. We head overseas now where there's been a brief pause in the fighting in Gaza, but the reprieve might be part of a strategy for Israeli troops to head to the Rafah crossing. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says there is a date. ABC's Britt Klenet reports in from Tel Aviv, Israel tonight. Tonight, Gaza's second largest city now unrecognizable. After months of Israeli bombardment, residents returning to the destruction after the IDF withdrew all its combat units from Han Yunus. Palestinians describing the trail of devastation left behind. Homes crushed and burned, overturned cars and trucks littering what used to be streets. This woman says her house is now a mountain of debris. Despite pulling ground forces from southern Gaza, the Israeli military saying this war is not over. The withdrawal coming as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces blistering criticism from President Biden, demanding he do more to reduce civilian casualties and allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. Israel announcing it will. Just today, Israel allowing the highest number of aid trucks into Gaza, bringing the total over the last two days up to 741. Lindsay, Israel pulling out all but one brigade in southern Gaza. It comes as talks are underway in Egypt for a deal which could bring home 40 hostages and boost much-needed aid into Gaza. Lindsay. Britt, thank you. Actor Jonathan Majors appeared today at a Manhattan court where he was sentenced to a year of domestic violence counseling in Los Angeles after the judge said jail time was, quote, not necessary. Majors must also continue with his mental health counseling and a permanent protection order was issued. Majors was found guilty last year of assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. Some major news tonight from President Biden from the critical battleground of Wisconsin. Biden unveiling sweeping student debt relief for tens of millions of Americans that could see that debt wiped away entirely, with millions more seeing at least $5,000 in relief. The president pressing forward with his debt relief plan, despite the fact that the Supreme Court struck down his first effort to forgive student debt last year. And we still have much more to get to here on Prime, the new decision from a college athletics organization on the future of transgender athletes. The next in the wake of the bridge collapse in Baltimore, the city was left to deal with a tragic loss, multiple lives and an unsure future. In our Prime Focus tonight, we talked to people who depended on the harbor to support themselves and their families. You got car payments, house payments, tuition payments. You know, you got to pay, you got to get food. Well, you wake up and all of a sudden you say you don't have a job. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. 
reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fork, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland, let's go. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming. ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today? Escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about. The migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. This is our combat operations center. We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not okay, ain't it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. Ismael. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. They're the most mysterious creatures on Earth. They're masterminds. Shapeshifters. They're just so incredibly alien. And yet, more like us than we ever could have imagined. What more do they have to tell us? And welcome back, everyone. Tomorrow marks two weeks since that devastating bridge collapse in Baltimore. We remember those shocking images of the Francis Scott Key Bridge hit head on by a cargo ship plummeting into the water, killing six construction workers and knocking out the livelihoods of generations of residents of Baltimore who rely on that harbor to get by. In tonight's Prime Focus, ABC's Jail Brian goes back to Baltimore to introduce us to the longshoremen and others in that city who are left shaken and uncertain about when they'll be able to return to work. I've seen a lot of incidents that are large, but nothing like this. This is what you would classify as a precedent for the unprecedented. I have never seen a massive bridge close down a port. Commander Bill McKinstry has managed disasters for the United States Coast Guard for nearly 30 years. But what the people of Baltimore are now facing is a first, even for him. We're, we're going to go completely around the whole thing. On the water, the sheer size of the task at hand for McKinstry and others becomes clear. What was once the Francis Scott Key Bridge is now thousands of tons of steel and concrete blocking most of Baltimore's harbor off from the rest of the world. The mission to cut up and clear all of this debris and bring Baltimore's port back to life is extremely dangerous. The difficulty that is surrounding that is immense because of the conditions of the water, the divers. Uh, you might have a foot of visibility to be able to see. So it makes it very, very treacherous. Crews now in a race to remove the wreckage. The Army Corps of Engineers setting an ambitious goal of clearing a channel for smaller cargo ships by late April and reopening the entire port by the end of May. I mean, there are 8,000 jobs tied to this port. Absolutely. And, and the bottom line is, is that's why we need to work as efficiently and as safely as possible. The enormity of the task. It's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take some time. Time is something they don't have at Local 953, one of three unions in Baltimore representing longshoremen. 
Most of them have already gone weeks without a paycheck and will stay out of work until cargo ships start coming and going again. These are different ships that were in the Port of Baltimore. We found Dave Koenig in the dispatch chair, fielding calls from longshoremen asking for their next day's assignments. But openings are slim. All day I tell them I have nothing for them. You tell them? I have nothing. Just no employment. There's nothing here. Some are still working on the little cargo that remains in Baltimore from before the bridge collapsed, but that's nothing in comparison to the flurry of activity this port once was. These are the guys assigned to that ship. Dave Everybody showed us what a packed schedule of longshoremen's assignments used to look like. This what is, is like what it looks people? like now. One, two, three people. A crisis, says Union President Richard Kruger, a third-generation longshoreman who still makes his living at the port. Families here are the water. Yes, and that's, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of families that have been like that. How does it feel not to know when this crisis is going to end? Well, just take, take the people that I represent. You got car payments, house payments, tuition payments. You know, you got to pay, you got to get food. Well, you wake up and all of a sudden they say you don't have a job. You got guys who are going to have to go on unemployment? Yeah, yeah, naturally. They, they, you gotta, you're looking to survive to get through this. But unemployment, Kruger says, barely covers the steady wages his longshoremen have built their lives with. And he doesn't know how long many of his people can hold out. It's the fear of the unknown. We, we don't know how long are they going to be off. How long is it going to take them to open the channel? How long do they have to... Uh, get through this because they have to pay the bills and nobody knows. The Port of Baltimore is the ninth largest by trading volume in the country. New cars are one of its biggest imports. And it's Nick Olszewski's job to check the batteries of those cars before they're shipped to dealers across the country. But with no new shipments coming in, soon, he fears, he won't be needed. So what's going through there now? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing's come in, nothing can go out. I know sooner or later it's probably going to affect me that I'll probably get laid off until they get that channel cleared. Some people, they work, they work week to week. They're going to really be hurting. We met Nick at Herman's Bakery in Dundalk, Maryland, a neighborhood in what was once the shadow of the Key Bridge. Like so many businesses here, Herman's customers need the port to survive. He used to sit in the window. And exactly. owner Adrian Porcella needs those customers to keep her business afloat. I don't know how these people are going to survive. The ones that work at Amazon that live across the bridge, where the supplies coming in. You think it's going to have an effect on your business too? I hope not. I really hope not. Um, we're just going to keep working hard. You know, I mean, that's all. That's all we do. We we work hard. In the back, head baker Larry DeSantis personifies that hard work. He usually arrives here at 1.45 in the morning, commuting not from home, but another bakery job in Baltimore. And for the past 16 years to do that, Larry took the key bridge. So you were driving this? Yes. Larry tells us on that Tuesday morning in late March, he was one of the last people to cross it before the Dolly, a cargo ship the size of the Eiffel Tower, lost power and steering and collided head-on with a pier of that bridge, the ship's size delivering a force comparable to that of a rocket launch. What was it like seeing that video? Uh, yeah, it was... <laughs> it makes me think, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm really lucky. <laughs> You're lucky to be alive. No, exactly. No, exactly. I mean, if I had been one minute later, I wouldn't be here. Eight construction workers, immigrants from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Mexico, were filling potholes on the bridge when it fell. Two were rescued. The bodies of three others have been recovered, and three are still missing, presumed dead. Baltimore is now grieving their loss, while the reality of living and working here without that bridge is starting to sink in. Just focus on that, and then slightly to the left, you'll see it. This is the closest so many Baltimoreans can now get to what was once described as a cathedral of American architectural prowess. Pulling over on the side of the highway, eyes squinting, phones outstretched, to try to catch a glimpse of what remains of the gateway to their city. You're tearing it's up. Not, yeah, I, 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 it's all right. Why? It's Baltimore. We weren't ready to see it. It's different from seeing it on TV okay. than, than seeing it in real life. In real life yeah. Right. Even though we're far away, you still feel, you still feel it.
Back up close is where that feeling of loss meets the hard reality of a mammoth cleanup effort that has no real end in sight. Folks here tell us this is a community that has seen tough times before, but they've always been able to pull through it with hard work. Work here is what makes all the difference. And it's work that's where so many Baltimoreans just want to return. It's who we are, it's what we do. We, we load and unload cargo vessels, and we're proud of it. We're stuck in the water here, we, we can't move. You're stuck in the water. Yeah, yeah. The truckers, the, the shippers, the warehouse workers, uh, it's, it's all of us, we're all in the same boat with this. All in the same boat there. Our thanks to Jay O'Brien for that. Still much more to get to tonight on Prime. Coming up, a teen is shot at a church. What the youth pastor says happened. But next, it's not just a scientific event. It's also a huge moneymaker. We take a look at the business of the eclipse by the numbers. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? Operation to capture ISIS fighters. This is our combat operations center. We're approaching the gate now. Militants came in from four or five different directions. Operational nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag, there's not a tear in it. Not a tear in it. How important is this label right here made the USA? Look at your smile. You're proud of this. I love it. Great work. Hi. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you, David. Good to meet you. Ismail? David. David. Yes, yes. I'm David Muir. I, I know who you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. You should see me Strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in the crowd. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. Reporting from the Iowa caucuses, I'm Wade Johnson. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. 
Welcome back, everyone. U.S. businesses are making big money from today's total eclipse of the sun. We're talking millions, if not billions of dollars from huge surges in demand for hotels and flights to souvenirs and post-eclipse bottles of champagne. Tonight, we take a look at the impact of the rare celestial event by the numbers. Forbes predicts a $1 billion boost for U.S. businesses nationwide. It could be like having 50 Super Bowls happening at the same time across the country. But listen to this, an economic analysis from out of Texas, the Perryman Group estimates the total impact from today's eclipse could be as high as $6 billion when all is said and done. Texas is set to make the most money, according to the firm, with a total impact of $1.4 billion. Texas is one of the 15 states in the eclipse's wide path of totality. And looking at the demand for hotel rooms alone, when you consider Super 8 Motels, which has 300 locations within the path of totality, one location in Grayville, Illinois, advertised $949 a night. The average nightly rate is $95. By comparison, if we look at the great American eclipse of 2017, South Carolina had some 793,000 out-of-state visitors who gave the state a boost to the tune of $269 million. Many retailers in the path of totality seven years ago also reported an average increase of foot traffic that was almost eight times that of a normal day. And we still have much more ahead here on Prime tonight as they find a way past the destruction of their own community. Students in Lahaina visit another country to learn from similar tragedies and why country music star Morgan Wallen was arrested on felony charges in Nashville. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, from Poland once again tonight. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. Do you think you'll ever be able to go back home? We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Splintered houses and splintered lives. And the magnitude of the devastation. You're streaming ABC News Live. Reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Santa Fe, New Mexico. Raleigh, North Carolina. The U.S. Capitol. Mayfield, Kentucky. Minneapolis. Mexico. Tongass National Forest, Alaska. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. Giving you a front row seat to our world as it plays out in real time, live. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights, America's most honored streaming news program, only on ABC News Live. Streaming free right now, wherever you stream your news. First thing in the morning. There's a lot going on. Yet another avalanche warning that's up. To catch you up with what happened overnight. A dangerous ice storm is impacting the morning commute. What's happening today, escalating tensions in the Middle East. What people are talking about, the migrant crisis. Fast, straightforward. With some fun in between. How does billionaire sound? Sounds good to me. The moose started chasing a dog. First thing in the morning. America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. On ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. America every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're gonna love it. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories, start here. Now, that's a part of the story that you didn't see coming. Make it your daily first listen wherever you get your podcasts. 
And welcome back, everyone, to this very special edition of Prime, live from Burlington, Vermont, following a stunning rare eclipse. We'll have more on that in a moment. But first, the person who could testify against former President Trump in one of his upcoming trials, the major music artist arrested for allegedly throwing a chair off of a rooftop, and why Walmart shoppers may be eligible for hundreds in cash. These stories and much more in tonight's Rundown. Witnesses expected in former President Trump's hush money trial will likely include some very close contacts. Sources tell ABC News that New York prosecutors are expected to rely on several people who were or are part of Mr. Trump's inner circle, possibly among them longtime assistant Rona Graff, former director of Oval Office operations Madeleine Westerhout, and longtime aide Hope Hicks. No witnesses list has been released publicly, and sources said the decision to call someone to testify could change before the trial, which begins April 15th. Two victims and a gunman are dead in Las Vegas after a shooting inside a law office. Police say there was a dispute inside the office, which led to the shooter opening fire, killing a man and a woman before dying by suicide. Officials say right now they don't know the relationship between the shooter and victims or the motive, but that it was not a random incident. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics announced a policy that all but bans transgender athletes from competing in women's sports. The new rule was approved at its annual convention in a 20 to 0 vote. The policy says all athletes can participate in male sports, but female sports will only allow athletes whose biological sex at birth is female and who have not begun hormone therapy. The NAIA is the sports governing body for 241 mostly small colleges with about 83,000 athletes. A North Carolina teenager allegedly shot another teen by accident at church. ABC affiliate WSOC-TV reports that a 15-year-old brought a gun to church in West Charlotte midday Sunday and shot a 17-year-old girl in the leg. She is reportedly expected to be okay. The youth pastor says the victim was his niece. It shouldn't have happened. It happened, and we're going we're gonna to take this situation, and we're going to grow from it. Country music superstar Morgan Wallen was arrested in Nashville over the weekend. Police say Wallen threw a chair from the six-story rooftop deck of a bar Sunday night, and it landed close to two officers. Wallen was charged with felony, reckless endangerment, and disorderly conduct. He was booked, then released, and his lawyer says he's cooperating with authorities. Walmart shoppers could be eligible to receive hundreds of dollars in cash. The retail giant is agreeing to pay out a total of $45 million to settle a class action lawsuit that accuses it of overcharging customers for some groceries. Walmart denies any wrongdoing, but it says that these payouts are in the best interest of customers. So if you bought products like meat, poultry, pork, or seafood, or if you bought bagged citrus fruit between October 2018 and January 2024, you can now file a claim to get your money back. Young people in Lahaina have been faced with a unique hardship. The last months of their high school careers were upended by tragedy after destructive and deadly wildfires tore through Maui. But thanks to a very special program, some of those students got a chance to take a grand adventure to Japan to meet with others who've lived through similar circumstances and learn about rebuilding and resilience. Our Becky Worley has this latest edition of our initiative, Maui 808. And then you put wasabi. Wasabi. Here in northeastern Japan, Lahaina high school students are rolling themselves into another culture. That's right. <laughs> 4,000 miles from their burned out town, survivors of another disaster here share wisdom. The 11 students are part of a cultural exchange program called Kibo for Maui. Sponsored by Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and implemented by the U.S. Japan Council. The goal? To give these Lahaina teens hope, mana olana in Hawaiian, kibo in Japanese. 
I was born and raised in the driving force behind this trip is Miku Narisawa. She's co-founder of Odyssey Nature Japan. When I saw the wildfires, then I immediately thought, okay, this is something that we should do for the kids in Lahaina. This is also one of them. Just over a decade ago, Miku was a survivor, just like these kids. In 2011, Miku's hometown was completely destroyed by the Great East Japan earthquake and the tsunami that followed. It killed tens of thousands of people, laid waste to entire towns, and triggered the Fukushima nuclear accident 85 miles away. 12-year-old Miku survived by evacuating with hundreds of others to the third floor of her elementary school. Miku and her family lived without electricity and running water for nearly two months. She says that day changed her life forever. Our town was destroyed. We lived with my grandparents for a month. And after that, we have to relocate to the temporary housing. And then we lived there for two years. Same height as the tsunami. But now, so about... showing the kids her rebuilt hometown, she says it's living proof they have a future and Lahaina will rise from the ashes. Your story, in a way, mirrors the story of so many of these kids mm -hmm. who ran for their lives, lost everything, living temporary housing. What do you hope that they realize from seeing you 13 years on, seeing this place 13 years on? I want them to know that Experience the wildfire is, was really tough, I'm sure, but that is not the end of the world and that's not, you know, the end of everything. Miku herself benefited from a similar program called Tomodachi Rainbow for Japan Kids. And after the tsunami, she traveled to Hawaii with 150 other Japanese students. This is a full circle for us. Hawaii resident Hawaii. and USJC board member Yo Kawanami was a volunteer and met Miku in 2011. I met this 13-year-old that had lost a lot at that time, and fa fast forward to 13 years later, she is a co-founder to a nonprofit organization in Tohoku area where she is preaching sustainability, growth, and giving back to the community. When you have a role model that actually has walked the talk, she is a survivor, and now she's a leader. Nothing should stop the 11 students, the Maui students, to feel the same way. Having Miku in front of that is a true example of what hope could be for these students. One of those kids, Zine Lagpakan, who lost his home in the fire. Back on Maui, it's the night before the trip, and the nerves are running high. What's your worry for a rebuilt Lahaina? Oh, I worry that there's going to be no housing for the residents before the fire. Um, I feel like a lot of situations where this happens, it turns into a big tourist trap. And I just don't want that to happen to my hometown. Yeah. What do you hope that you can learn in Japan to keep that from happening? Oh, great question. Um, I'm not entirely sure, actually. That's the reason why I'm going to Japan. What questions would you ask? I want to ask them how to make it feel like home again. A few miles away, Mia Kosanowski, hoping the trip brings her clarity. I just want to help any way I can because I love this community so much. And I know I keep saying that, but it's so true <laughs> because this community has shaped who I am. Originally, she thought she'd go to college in California. Then after the fire, kind of everything really changed, like my way of thinking and what I saw for the future. And I just feel like my place is here. All of the students are hoping to contribute, like MG, a high school senior who's already taking college level courses in disaster management. I started taking course this semester and I've loved it. It relies on human history and human error to improve the system. Some students leaving Maui for the very first time to make the 10 hour trek to Japan. The cohort selected and coached by the Japanese Cultural Center of Hawaii. A tremendous growth opportunity for these students to come up here, be away from home, be in a, a different climate, to meet people and, and understand they're not alone in what they're going through. <laughs> On arrival, the students taking it all in. Oh, wow. 
The students getting a glimpse of what was left after the disaster here, a time capsule of what this town once was. It's kind of gives us hope for Lahaina because they were talking about how everything was underwater and like seeing home, like just everything's burnt right now to see like there is hope, like it can come back and flourish and like have life again. Seeing how high the wave of water was, now just a line of paint on the wall. Hearing stories of survival and loss, it struck a chord with Zine. That really hit me hard. There were so many parallels with yeah. Lahaina in the story of the tsunami. What did you see that was the same? I guess the sentimentality about how people lost their loved ones, and I could really relate. But the magic of this trip, the kids realizing there is life, even after a disaster of this magnitude, and that their lives will not always be dominated by the fire. They meet Japanese students bonding over sports, <laughs> and their favorite foods. They share culture and also learn how this community found healing. And they see how the rebuild can include progress, like this reimagined oyster farm that's now wholly centered on sustainability. The farm once owned by this fisherman, Gosan's family. It was destroyed by the tsunami, but he recovered. That really like, struck a chord to me, because it really shows that like, if you don't give up and you keep persevering, you can return things to back to what they were. Yeah. <laughs> My hope is that they return home and, you know, they use what they've learned from Japan and everyone that they met here and put it into action back home. The week culminating with those ideas. So that brings the question, what can we bring back to Lahaina? So when I visited Onagawa, I found it very interesting on how they decided to rebuild. This made me realize that we need to think strategically when it comes to rebuilding our hometown. We also want to bring back hope, hope and meaning like we can rebuild and recover Lahaina back. This trip really gave me hope and I thought if I got a spark of hope, I think my community will also will. Even if we come out of a tragedy that destroyed many of our daily lives, there is still hope for us to recover. There's still hope for a better future. So keep a hope for, the, for a better future. That's what it means to me. Likely a transformational trip. Our thanks to Becky Worley for bringing us that. And now to women's basketball. The sport has always had diehard fans, but this year has been a game changer, breaking ratings records and changing the perceptions about the popularity of women's sports. ABC's Robin Roberts has that story. A sport forever changed. The South Carolina Gamecocks taking home the NCAA championship overnight. Undefeated South Carolina won its third national championship. But it was all of women's college basketball that emerged victorious this season. No one has done more to grow the popularity of this game than Caitlin Clark. 22-year-old Caitlin Clark bringing a whole new audience to the sport, captivating millions with her dominating, unabashed play, breaking records, not just on the court. Gets her name in the record books one more time. Viewership for games skyrocketing, and Iowa's ticket prices increasing more than 160% from last year as Clark raced to break the all-time scoring record in Division I basketball. Fans lining up for hours to watch her make history. This for college basketball history. The shift is monumental in a sport that historically has not garnered the same fervor for female players as it has for the men. Because of Caitlin Clark, sports are cool for girls in a way we had never seen before. And maybe just as important, the Title IX males, the dads now. People are talking about how I used to cover this game back in the day. What we're seeing right now on this floor, the attention. Woo. Clark, along with LSU's Angel Reese, 
UConn's Paige Beckers and South Carolina's Camilla Cardoso, representing the next generation of women athletes raised in the age of Title IX, a law banning sex discrimination in educational activities. These are young women who received Title IX on full blast. They had the coaching, the interest from their parents. They are really the product of what this nation has created because of Title IX and how the nation has fallen in love with what it has created. Clark, step back three, you bet! Iowa's final four game against UConn on Friday, drawing in 14.2 million viewers, breaking ESPN viewership records, making it their most viewed basketball game ever. Clark now gearing up for the WNBA draft as the probable first pick. Walking off the court, she forever changed one final time as a collegiate back -back athlete. Trips. The coolest part for me on this journey is just we start our season playing in front of 55,000 people in, in Kinnick Stadium, and now we're ending it probably playing in front of 15 million people or more on TV. You know, it just continues to get better and better and better. A game changer indeed. Our thanks to Robin for bringing us that. Today, though, was certainly not an ordinary day on our planet, a stark reminder of humanity's unique and small place within our Milky Way galaxy. Throughout the day, planet Earth's only moon passed in front of the sun, and the total eclipse created incredible images from across the country as millions watched from city streets to rural fields. The temperature dropped and people hugged and celebrated as the celestial bodies reorganized themselves to the delight of all us Earthlings down here. The next time a total solar eclipse will be viewable from the lower 48 United States, you'll have to wait 20 more years until 2044. But until then, we will surely continue looking to the cosmos to find even more amazing wonders of our shared universe. And that is our show for this hour. I'm Lindsay Davis. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thank you so much for streaming with us. And coming up in the next hour, tens of millions of Americans looking up at the sky, taking in the total solar eclipse. We'll have more on those breathtaking moments. And a new announcement from the Vatican, the actions it's calling grave violations of human dignity. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. It's lunchtime in America, so what are we serving up? Well, how about everything you need to know? You know, that sounds pretty good. Give it to me. Your health, your money, breaking news, pop culture, with the biggest stars, music, trends, and of course, good food. GMA 3, what you need to know. A third hour of GMA in the afternoon. So join us, afternoons. For everything you need to know. I love Give that. It to me. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families the here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. From the capital. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? An operation to capture ISIS fighters. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate now. Militants came in from four or five different directions. Operational nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag, there's not a tear in it. Not a tear in it. How important is this label right here made the USA? Look at your smile. You're proud of this. I love it. Great work. Hi. Where are you? Where are you? Appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you, David. Good to meet you. Ismail? David. David. 
Yes, yes. I'm David Muir. I, I know who you are. You I watch do. you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Whenever, wherever news breaks, it's so important to always remember that lives are changed. Here in London, in Buffalo, Uvalde, Texas, Edinburgh, Scotland, reporting from Rolling Fork, Mississippi, Ukrainian refugees here in Warsaw. We're heading to a small community outside of Mexico City. Getting you behind the stories as they happen. ABC News Live Prime. We'll take you there. Stream ABC News Live weeknights wherever you stream your news. Only on ABC News Live. Reporting from Monterey Park, California, I'm Robin Roberts. Wherever, wherever the story is, we're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live Prime. I'm Lindsay Davis reporting in live from Burlington, Maine, after a rare eclipse across much of the United States. Thanks so much for streaming with us. We have a lot of news to get to this evening, including that rare collective moment, the country looking eyes up, the rare total eclipse, the moments of unity coast to coast as the nation set their gaze to the sky for this once in a lifetime moment. We'll have all the details as we chase the eclipse from Texas all the way to Maine. Plus, the last-ditch effort by Donald Trump to get his hush money case that's set to take place in just a week off the docket. And the toll of war, our own Martha Raddatz sits down with World Central Kitchen founder Jose Andres, why he's calling for a reckoning following the Israeli strike that killed seven of his workers. But we do begin with that scene that played out across much of the country today, 15 states, as millions of Americans sought out the once-in-a-lifetime chance to witness the moon pass between the Earth and sun. Oh my God, I can't Wait, do you see the bee? Oh my God, From emotional tears to all out applause, time seemed to stand still for millions of Americans from Texas to May. 99% of us were able to see at least some part of this rare total solar eclipse. At the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, thousands looked to the sky from the bleachers while clouds over Niagara Falls parted just in time for crowds to experience total darkness there. Here in Burlington, Vermont, also along the path of totality, I had a chance to witness the historic moment alongside my colleague David Muir, just one of many cities across the U.S. that experienced this rare collective moment of an experience much larger than ourselves. And there we go. There we have it. Across North America, a fleeting phenomenon. Woo, look at that. A celestial spectacle when for a brief moment, time seemed to stand still. Starting off in Mexico. I've never seen anything like this before. This is my first total eclipse. Millions flocked to the path of totality of a solar eclipse moving more than 3,000 miles per hour, stretching across 15 states. It is getting quiet. It is getting dark. All eyes, young and old, bearing witness to a celestial event visible with the naked eye with hopes they wouldn't be cheated out of this rare event by cloud cover. We'll see what happens. It's up to the weather gods now. Look at that. Millions united by an act of the heavens, two celestial bodies aligned. All of us able to play astronomer for the day as the sun's corona encircled the moon. I got tingles from my fingertips right down my elbows into my knees. Ooh. My heart is beating so fast, Ginger. Many experiencing a 10 degree dip. But I can tell you the biggest feeling that I have right now is just that temperature drop and the energy that is coming from the community here. Um, I always, I almost want to be a little bit quiet, David and Lindsay, as this moment, oh my gosh, wow. And it wasn't just the temperatures that dropped, some tears did as well, many emotional and in awe. You sound tears, emotional. Tears in my eyes. A universal moment of unity. And here in Russellville, Arkansas, a moment of celebration for star-crossed lovers. You may now seal the sacred union with a kiss. As the sun and moon appeared to become one, so too did more than 300 couples choosing this special day to get married. This couple's first date was during the partial eclipse in 2017. The sun and the moon and the earth have become one and so have we. <laughs> oh. 
The moon passes in front of the sun about every 18 months, but for so many of us, it's out of view. A sight like this in the lower 48 states won't come again for two more decades. An unusual moment experienced by animals of all kinds, some with confusion. Birds, flocks of birds flying by. We see a lot of insects around us. It got cold and it is dark here in Dallas, you guys. 35,000 feet up, flight radar revealed the large number of planes right in the path of totality. From space, astronauts at the International Space Station got their own unique view, experiencing the blanket of darkness from on high. Those outside the path of totality from New York City to our nation's capital not left out of the experience entirely. And just as quickly as this ethereal beauty arrived, it departed, but its impact not soon forgotten. The feeling, it's a feeling that's indescribable. For many, it's a gateway experience, prompting new curiosities about space and beyond, along with an eagerness to chase the next eclipse. And it's just incredible, no? I will go see every single one I can. <laughs> <laughs> It is contagious, and earlier I had a chance to talk to my colleague and anchor of World News Tonight, David Muir, to give us his thoughts on the day. We were on the air together for hours. Of course, weeks of planning went to this, but there are always surprises. Was there anything that surprised you about today? Oh, gosh, so much. Uh, and I think that we were both surprised in, in some of the same moments. When we were standing right here in Burlington, obviously, beautiful Lake Champlain behind yes, us. I mean, how beautiful gorgeous. is this tonight? Like ice, the water. But under a perfectly clear blue sky, mm. the temperature shifted first, and we knew that was coming, but it, then it came. And it's still cold tonight as we stand here. But then when the skies darkened and that final moment, that final sort of beam of light coming from the sun that they call the diamond ring, we had seen it play out in some of the other locations, but when it played out here right behind us, when we were looking with our glasses, it seemed enormous, didn't mm. it? it? I mean, sure that was a did. nice rock. It really, yes, exactly. <laughs> Whoever got that diamond ring. But I just was, it, it was so breathtaking. I couldn't, you know, come up with the words for it. And we, we played back the video just because I wanted to see what it was that you and I were looking at. And it was almost like this pink, purplish yes. glow. And I thought that was one of the most um, defining moments. And you actually called it because in some of the places, uh, you know, I know at Niagara Falls, Rob Marciano had said, oh, it's kind of cloudy, we're bummed. And you were like, there's a chance that the skies will clear up. And they did. And for some people, it was an emotional experience. You've been through this before, not your first rodeo. Yeah. What is it about this moment that you feel it brings some people to tears? Well, I think one of the things is we covered this every night on the news. Uh, it's a divided country. There, there's so much polarization, and, and a lot of it probably is unnecessary. There's a lot of competing voices at the each end of the spectrum. And I think this is one of those moments where we're reminded of that, how unnecessary some of that noise is, because it's a shared moment. And look at the millions of Americans, and, you know, not just the path of totality, which was wider than the last time, but the far reaches, you know, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, they all saw it. Central Park, the top yes. of the Empire State Building. And even when we were standing here, it just goes quiet. Yes. The birds are flying sideways. Yeah, you right, pointed that right. out. You were like, what's going on here? But just to see, I mean, speaking <laughs> right of, on cue. Oh, team coverage, <laughs> the bird just flew over us. But I just think the silence also spoke volumes. People were definitely in it together. And you you and I were talking off air about the people of Burlington. When, when we arrived and we arrived separately, we both were received in sort of the same way. People were telling us we're here for the eclipse. This is a rare once in a lifetime moment. It's going to be 20 years before we experience this again. And I think I think when we have a shared moment like that, it really does remind us that uh, how much uh, hunger there is for these shared moments out there. It puts things really in perspective. David, just a pleasure and privilege uh, oh, to be alongside with so you today witnessing this. We're joking Thank tomorrow. You. Let's do it again. Yeah, right, well, I think exactly. 20 years, 20 years. 2044. Do the math. Yeah, do the we'll math. We'll see you I don't then. know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll be around, but I'm not sure we'll be around. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be doing okay. it. We'll okay. be doing it. David, thank you, you so much. And switching gears now, former President Trump has taken a stand on abortion, saying he believes the issue should be left to the states. That position angered his anti-abortion supporters who looked to him to endorse a nationwide ban. But it shows how pivotal the issue could be in his re-election bid. Here's ABC's senior congressional correspondent, Rachel Scott. Tonight, after months of hinting he would support a national abortion ban, now Donald Trump declaring the matter should be left up to individual states. The states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. 
Just last month, Trump said he was leaning towards supporting a national ban at around 15 weeks. The number of weeks now, people are, are agreeing on 15, and I'm thinking in terms of that. But now a reversal. Today, Trump made it clear politics was at the heart of his decision. Keenly aware abortion rights has won in all six states where it has appeared on the ballot, including in conservative states like Kansas, Kentucky, and Ohio. You must follow your heart of this issue, but remember, you must also win elections to restore our culture and, in fact, to save our country. Tonight, President Biden pointing out 21 states have banned or severely limited access to abortion since Roe was overturned. Donald Trump just endorsed every single state ban on reproductive care nationwide. Biden's campaign seizing on Trump's false new claim that both sides of the abortion debate were happy when the Supreme Court overturned Roe. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. Today, Vice President Harris firing back. He's proudly responsible that one in three women of reproductive age now live in a state with an abortion ban. If he were to be put back in a position where he could sign off on a law, he would sign off on a national abortion ban. Let's be very clear about that. The Biden campaign reminding Americans Trump often boasted of appointing the justices who overturned Roe, taking away a woman's right to choose. Tonight, warning voters not to be fooled. Trump says he supports exceptions for rape, incest, and to save the life of the mother. He won't say if he also supports exceptions to protect the mother's health. Lindsay. Rachel, thank you. One week before he's scheduled to stand trial in his hush money case, former President Trump today launched a last-minute attempt to delay, arguing the publicity around his trial makes it impossible to find a fair and impartial jury. But an appeals court in New York rejected that request for a delay. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to hide payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. Daniels was allegedly paid $130,000 to keep quiet about an extra mal affair that they had years earlier. The trial is set to begin next week and will be the first ever criminal trial of a former president. A scare on board a Southwest flight from Denver to Houston shortly after takeoff. Passengers looking out of the window saw that part of the engine cover was ripping away. ABC's Mola Lange reports in from Denver. Tonight, frightening video showing part of the engine cover on a Southwest jet tearing off as the plane makes an immediate emergency landing. Southwest Flight 3695 had departed from Denver just before 8 a.m. on Sunday, bound for Houston, when passenger Lisa Catterall says she felt a jolt outside her window. Several of us called the flight attendant, and she was like, oh, my God, and went and got the pilots. The pilots declaring an emergency and requesting an immediate return. We got a piece of the engine cowling hanging off, apparently. Our engines seem to be fine, but uh, we are structurally damaged. The Boeing 737, with 143 passengers and crew on board, forced to return to Denver just minutes later, crews towing it back to the gate. These kinds of incidents are fairly rare, but anytime they do happen, it's usually because somebody failed to close those outer panels on the engine. In a statement, Southwest saying, in part, the plane landed safely after experiencing a mechanical issue, adding, our maintenance teams are reviewing the aircraft. Well, Lindsay, passengers arrived in Houston later on Sunday after being put on another plane. And tonight, the FAA says it's investigating. Lindsay? Mola, thank you. Yet another deadly shooting in our country today, this time inside a law office in Las Vegas, where two people lost their lives as hundreds of workers ushered to barricade themselves. ABC's Victor Kendo has this report. Police today racing to a law office in Las Vegas, responding to reports of an active shooter. Suspect is barricaded. We have three victims shot. Officers rushing to the fifth floor where a suspect had opened fire, killing a man and a woman. We're still searching for victims. Command copies that. Potential gunshot wound to the shooter. I heard some screams and yelling coming from like out in the hallway. So then we all ran and dispersed into the offices and started um, hiding. Hundreds of workers quickly making it to safety. Others barricading themselves inside. We have people that are hunkered down following the active shooter protocols. We're going door by door and, and making sure that everybody in there is okay. The shooter taking his own life. Law enforcement sources say it all unfolded during a deposition involving a custody dispute. 
Our thanks to Victor Okendo. We head overseas now where there's been a brief pause in the fighting in Gaza, but the reprieve might be a part of a strategy for Israeli troops to head to the Rafah crossing. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says there is a date. ABC's Britt Klenet is in Israel tonight. Tonight, Gaza's second largest city now unrecognizable. After months of Israeli bombardment, residents returning to the destruction after the IDF withdrew all its combat units from Han Yunus. Palestinians describing the trail of devastation left behind. Homes crushed and burned, overturned cars and trucks littering what used to be streets. This woman says her house is now a mountain of debris. Despite pulling ground forces from southern Gaza, the Israeli military saying this war is not over. The withdrawal coming as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces blistering criticism from President Biden, demanding he do more to reduce civilian casualties and allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza. Israel announcing it will. Just today, Israel allowing the highest number of aid trucks into Gaza, bringing the total over the last two days up to 741. Lindsay, Israel pulling out all but one brigade in southern Gaza. It comes as talks are underway in Egypt for a deal which could bring home 40 hostages and boost much-needed aid into Gaza. Lindsay. Britt, thank you. Actor Jonathan Majors appeared today in a Manhattan court where he was sentenced to a year of domestic violence counseling in Los Angeles after the judge said jail time was, quote, not necessary. Majors must also continue with his mental health counseling and a permanent protection order was issued. Majors was found guilty last year of assaulting his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. Some major news tonight from President Biden from the critical battleground of Wisconsin. Biden unveiling sweeping student debt relief for tens of millions of Americans that could see that debt wiped away entirely, with millions more seeing at least $5,000 of relief. The president pressing forward with his debt relief plan, despite the fact that the Supreme Court struck down his first effort to forgive student debt last year. And we still have much more to get to here tonight. Coming up a week after the deaths of seven aid workers in an Israeli strike, the head of the organization talks about the lives lost and the impact on their work. The next one president's desperate plea for help to prevent millions from hunger due to drought. Whenever news breaks. We are here in Israel, a nation at war after that brutal surprise attack by Hamas. On the ground in Ukraine, reporting from Lewiston, Maine. The scene of a horrific mass shooting. ABC News Live is right there everywhere. From the scene of that deadly missile strike in Dnipro, Ukraine. Reporting from the earthquake in Turkey. In rolling fort, this tornado tore through this little town. From the most devastating disaster in Hawaii. From Charleston, South Carolina, on the 2024 campaign trail. In Iceland. Let's go. Yeah. Traveling with the president in Mexico City. Wherever the story. From the front lines. From southern Israel. Outside the Gaza Strip. In Beirut. From the FBI. Reporting from the nurses on the picket line. Here at 10 Downing Street in London. Streaming live to you. Wherever the story is. Wherever the story is. Wherever the the story is. We're going to take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. You're streaming ABC News Live. ABC News Live. Streaming free everywhere. America's number one streaming news. does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? We are part of an operation. This is our combat operations center. We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not a pair, ain't it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Appreciate you. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know you are. You I do. Watch you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Reporting from a record-setting snowy Buffalo, I'm Trevor Alt. Wherever the story is, we'll take you there. You're streaming ABC News Live. Welcome back. We're tracking several headlines around the world. The Vatican is blasting sex change surgery, surrogacy, and gender theory in a new 20-page doctrine. 
The document repeats the Vatican's previous claim that one's gender cannot be changed, saying that sex change surgeries threaten a person's dignity. The document puts sex change operations and surrogacy on par with abortion and euthanasia as practices that, according to the Vatican, violate God's plan for human life. Southern Africa is reeling from its worst drought in years, owing to a combination of naturally occurring El Nino, Zimbabwe feeling such dire effects from the drought that their president has declared it a national disaster and said he needs $2 billion to save 2.7 million people from hunger. Student protests in Mexico set a government building ablaze amid anger over the death of a fellow student, Yankee Gomez. Gomez died after state police reportedly opened fire on a vehicle he was traveling in. Gomez's death came one day after a group of protesters they were protesting the disappearance of 43 students in Mexico in 2014. It has been one week now since seven aid workers with the World Central Kitchen were killed in Gaza when an Israeli drone struck their marked convoy, despite the group having coordinated their location and movements with the IDF. The carnage appeared to galvanize a new level of outrage among state leaders that more should be done to protect the lives of civilians and those trying to help them. The founder of World Central Kitchen, renowned chef turned philanthropist Jose Andres, sat down with weekend with, this weekend with our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz. At what point did it sink in for you, the enormity of this loss? Well, it has not sink in yet. I'm still going through the process. Um, but there's a lot of work to be done. We are a small organization, and right now we are in the middle of this uh, a story that we wish we were not part of. We are an organization that we want to go to difficult places and bring food to people and bring joy to people. Because people, when it's about food and water, they need you today. So for me, I think uh, the grief is going on, especially the members I knew closely. So me, I spent a lot of time with her in missions. Um, she was always a joy and was a very beloved member of the community. She is like a sister. Uh, Damien, who was a newest member, and so this hits home because that's, uh, that's, that's people I, I, I serve next, next to, and, and they're the example of who we are and that they, uh, putting themselves in harm's way to try to bring hope uh, and smiles to others. What the White House did this week, it seemed like a very significant shift, saying there would be consequences if they didn't allow essentially more humanitarian aid and, and take more care uh, with civilian lives. Were you satisfied with that statement? I think there will be consequences is part of the problem. Should be already consequences. Support Israel right to defend itself, but you cannot be used given weapons that they are killing American citizens who are humanitarians. You can be supporting Israel right to defend itself, but at the same time, you can be asking Israel to conduct themselves at the highest possible human level. Not only have you suffered this tragedy and the loss of your employees, you care so much about getting humanitarian aid in there, about getting food in there, and you can't do it right now. So how and when can you come back? Sometimes history is written, unfortunately, in moments like this. But if it's anything that the lives of these six heroes, brave souls, can bring is use the real understanding of what's really happening in Gaza. The answer of why all the destruction cannot be because it's a Hamas operative in every building. We cannot be winning a war destroying the livelihoods of two million people. This is not a way to create safety for Israel. This is not the way to create safety for the Middle East. This is not the way to create safety for a better tomorrow. I don't believe in higher walls. I believe in longer tables. What is good for me must be good for you. Your CEO said this was unforgivable. Despite what happens with the investigation, despite however more is done, is this unforgivable? 
It is unforgivable. Um, I will have to live with this the rest of my life. We all will have to live with this the rest of our lives. I've seen firsthand what has been happening in Ukraine. Entire towns and cities being wiped out by Russia and by Putin. But Prime Minister Netanyahu is doing is exactly the same. The best future we can be providing for our children is when we provide for the children of the people we don't know the same future and the same hope we are trying to provide for our own. What is so difficult to understand about that? Our thanks to Martha for that. Right after our show on ABC News Live, you can catch a fuller version of her interview, Toll of War, the Jose Andres interview, coming up right after Prime. And still to come, as we report from Vermont, which was in the path of totality, reflecting on the eclipse, covering 15 states as tens of millions of Americans watch the awe-inspiring event. Why do so many people start their day here? From ABC News, this is Start Here. To be in the know and get a different take on the day's top stories. A lot of news today, so let's get into it. Listen now to the Daily News Podcast honored with four Edward R. Murrow Awards and see why the New York Times calls it a news podcast worth listening to. Start Here, ABC News. Make it your daily first listen. Now, that's a part of the story I bet you didn't see coming. Wherever you get your podcasts, start here. You should see me Strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in a crowd. You should see me in a crowd. Strongest females fight for the survival of their families. Oh, hey, the queens. You should see me in a crowd. What does it take to be the most watched newscast in America? Part of an operation. Is this our combat operations center? We're approaching the gate. Militants came in from different directions. Nuclear reactor. So you have a couple loaded and ready to go. The house is destroyed, but the flag. Not okay, ain't it? How important it made the USA. Great work. Hi. Thank you. It's my own. David. David. I'm David Muir. I know who you are. You I watch do. you every night. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. Today, of course, was no ordinary day on our planet, a stark reminder of humanity's unique and small place within our Milky Way galaxy. Throughout the day, planet Earth's only moon passed in front of the sun, and the total eclipse created incredible images from across the country as millions watched from city streets to rural fields. The temperature dropped, people hugged, celebrated, got married, you saw there, as the celestial bodies reorganized themselves to the delight of us Earthlings down here. The next time a total solar eclipse will be viewable from the lower 48 United States, you'll have to wait 20 years until 2044. But until then, we'll surely continue looking to the cosmos to find more amazing wonders of our shared universe. And that is our show for tonight. I'm Lindsay Davis. ABC News Live is here for you all night with the latest news, context, and analysis. You can always find us on Hulu, Roku, Pluto TV, the ABC News app, and, of course, on abcnews.com. The news never stops. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Reporting tonight from Burlington, Vermont. Have a great evening.